Now wait a minute. Hey, relax. What are you doing? Hey. Hey. You're gonna have a seat. Sit down. I'll try to have a seat if you let go of me. You not you don't hold me. Police officers are meant to uphold the law, but some bad cops remain unapologetic as they break it, even when caught in the act. Today, we'll be looking at cases where corrupt cops get caught red-handed. On February 26th, 2022, Officer Michael Kinsley of the Dickinson Police Department responded to an accident call that involved a pickup truck and a biker in Dickinson, Texas. Sixty three, show me out on that auto pit. I said I was. You all right? Yeah, a little hit to get together. He'd be stubborn by getting checked out, but he said he's all right. I'm all right. So we're just. You all right? I told him I won't take no, it out. No, I ain't all right. I need about a about a million dollars, and then I'll be all right. Well, you ain't getting that, so. Yeah. Well, no shit. I'm trying to get him. I, I, he's always. You go, you my go street, ahead and so. get that. I want to get you. Down. I got that, and you know I can put that mother. Okay. Even though it's a complicated son of a. Yeah. Uh, well, so what do you want to do? The cop noticed that the victim was not visibly injured and then began making inquiries. The truck owner stated that he had accidentally collided with the elderly man and insisted that they go for a medical checkup, but the man did not want to comply. 63, he's not injured. No, I'm going to see it. Uh, can, you, uh, can you run Michael Scrollock? I think I'm on even though everything seemed fine, the officer informed the command center of the situation, but requested that they run his name through the database. No, sir. 63, did you get my last transmission? Stop by, stop by the house. You know where I be. I'm glad that you are somebody I know. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't go anywhere yet. What do you mean, don't go anywhere yet? Exactly what the fuck you mean, said, don't go anywhere yet. Hey, what the fuck does it have I done? All right, am I through? No. What have I got to do? You got to wait here. What for? Tell me. Till we finish our investigation. Investigation? There ain't matter of no fact, have a seat. Have a seat matter, on the curb. Matter of fact, I was out there laying have a seat on the curb the, you're not listening to me have a seat that's on the what curb. you're supposed to do have a seat I, on the curb. I hit she hit me i mean he hit me and i wasn't i thought he saw me the victim was about to leave when the officer told him that he could not Hey, have a seat on the curb. I'm gonna look for my stuff, young man. The elderly man, completely frustrated by the authoritative and imposing cop, was about to sit as instructed when he suddenly realized he had dropped something. Anxiously, he began searching for it. All right, turn around. For Come on, now, wait a minute. Hey, relax. What are you doing? Hey, hey. You're gonna have a seat. Sit down. I'll try to have a seat if you let go of me. You not, you don't hold me. For some unknown reason, this provoked the irate officer, and within seconds, he violently shoved Michael against a police cruiser before ruthlessly throwing him to the curb, where he slammed his head and was knocked out instantly. Put your hands behind your back. Six to three, go ahead, rolling, uh, rolling ambulance. <clears throat> Not minding that the elderly man was visibly injured, Officer Kingsley proceeded to aggressively arrest the biker before calling for an ambulance. What, uh, we need him now. Six to three, go ahead, rolling. Is he out? Huh? Is he out?
Footage from the supervising officer's body cam clearly showed that Officer Kingsley had knocked Michael out. The assailant also confirmed that the victim was not visibly drunk and that his only offense was refusing to sit. Can you make bond, sir? I take that as a no. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? What are we doing? The officers then proceeded to unlawfully lock Michael up in the Dickinson City Jail for allegedly resisting arrest and being drunk in public, even though they had no substantial evidence against him. Oh, how am I here? You got a public intoxication yesterday. I got beat on this today. Having signed that, fill that out if it has any information, we'll go from there. Man, I ain't got no way out of here. No, you're getting out. You're getting out. Sign right here for me. Oh, God. Give me a name one of the best you can. Man, I can't. I can't see. Huh? I can't see. How do I see? The station security camera footage showed the innocent man showing signs of confusion and dizziness. Okay. Just sit, sit right there on the bench for me. I think this one got, um, I think this is. God, my. That got. Ah! Yeah. Okay, hey, you're gonna have to be quiet. I see that. You're gonna have to be quiet, right? Man. Yes, sir. Come on. I can't come over. The judge is out here. Unable to hold himself up any longer, he collapsed and even vomited before he was finally released. After he was released, Michael Skurlock went to his sister's house to recover, but his stay there was short as his sister found him unconscious the next day in her backyard. Upon arriving at the hospital, the frail man was diagnosed with a severe brain bleed and had to be placed on compulsory bed rest under intensive care for two weeks. The once giddy Michael was never the same after the unfortunate incident, as he spent the last nine months of his life moving from hospitals to nursing homes before passing away in December 2022. The outraged locals could not stomach this injustice. As of February 2024, Officer Kingsley had been placed on administrative leave without pay, marking what will likely be the final time he ever wears a police badge. These cops were crafty and tried sweeping the case under the rug. However, the next case will leave you completely shocked. Yes, sir. Okay, Michael. So, um, just to let you know, bro, right now, you're going to be detained. On January 24th, 2024, officers promptly responded to an urgent 911 call about a man threatening people with a deadly weapon at a gas station near Osuna Road and Jefferson Street in Northeast Albuquerque. Thank you. Hi, sir. What's going on, bro? Over here, I serve a key. Uh, we're leaving, I serve a key, and uh, we're just out there opening your candy, getting ready to leave. And this guy, uh, you know, he's on a PA system and turns the lights on and says, Get out of here. Get, get, uh, get, get out of here. Take your business out, sir. On arriving at the scene, the cops questioned the startled man who had placed the distressing call. They had just exited the store when a man in a truck flashed his duty lights at them and used a PA system to sternly order them to leave. So, so then uh, I, I said, excuse me. I started walking like this. And he pulls his gun out on me. He says, get the fuck back. Get the fuck back. I said, I said why? He goes, this is the sheriff's office. I said, whatever, dude. So he started walking and he kept playing the gun like this to us. He said, well, I'm going to take your soul. I'm going to take your soul from you right now. Keep tying in this guy. Wondering what was happening, they hesitated, and then the aggressive assailant brought out a gun and threatened to abruptly end both men's lives. Hello, sir. My name is Officer Weatherly. Are you security here? No, I'm just telling you. You're just telling you? So the reason why I'm talking to you is uh, we got a call for service about... A silver Dodge, a gentleman pointing a gun at somebody else, saying he's going to take a soul and doing all that. Do you mind just stepping out for me real quick so I can complete my investigation? Because this is the truck that they named. Probably and then you're sitting inside of it. I, I understand that. You saw me walk around the corner. I'm just trying to do my investigation, okay? Okay, just go ahead and step on out for me. Do you have a gun or anything? 
No? Okay. Go ahead. Okay, just one. Um, did you have an idea with you? Yeah. Okay. As other officers listened to the distressed victims, an officer went ahead to confront an individual who had the same vehicle as the suspect and told him to identify himself. I literally just got here now. So you, you don't have a gun or anything? I saw the vest in there. Yeah, I got a vest. But no gun? Yeah. You're not pointing it at anybody or anything like that? No, I'm being called for the door. We are going to have to have a bag of hope. Dead with it. 10 4. Do they have a description of the male subject? Or just a vehicle? On turning over his ID, the suspect brazenly lied that he had no weapon in his vehicle and falsely claimed that he had just arrived at the gas station. While the officer tried to confirm if he had approached the correct individual. You're not working security or anything? No. Okay. What do you do for work? Uh, I work for the county. You work for the county? Yeah. What do you do for the county? I'm with the SO. Oh, you are? Yeah. So you're off duty? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey Brett, where are you at? So I'm like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm on the west end of the Circle K. You didn't have any altercations with anybody, no arguments or anything? Yeah. Do you see? Awkward. Yeah, I know, it is. It's no, super I am, awkward. Yeah, like, just fucking awkward, man. Uh, <laughs> I know. Um, you know, you see or anything like that? You don't got it. A PA in here or anything like that? Is this your POV? This isn't your POV? Or this is? No, this is my county car. This uh, is your county car? Yeah. Okay. The man finally reveals that he works for the county as a BCSO officer and that he did not have any prior altercations. He also told the officer that he did not have a PA system in the vehicle. Awkward. Yeah, like we're just <laughs> waiting for the description of the guy or whatever they're doing sure. over there, so. What's that? We're just waiting to what other whatever the other officer's doing over there with our oh, yeah. caller. So um, I don't know if he's doing a field ID or whatever. So. Sure. Yeah, this is really. I know, <laughs> but I don't. I like for me. Per, like, I don't put people in cuffs. Like if I don't have to. Yeah, no, I get it, bro. So like, like it's awkward as fuck. That's why I'm like I'm not like. <laughs> What's going on? But, I mean, we can have you sit down. Yeah. You'd be a little bit more comfy, but. Nah, man. <laughs> the BCSO deputy kept on stating that the situation was awkward. Yeah. What's the first deal with AP? Yep. This is Michael. Michael? Yes, sir. Okay, Michael. So, um, just to let you know, bro, right now, you're going to be detained until further notice. Just pending investigation, okay? That's it. Um, so we do have to place you in handcuffs for now. Okay. Uh, cool. um, just until we can start some more investigation yeah. of what's going on. Okay. Got two cuffs. Yeah. You know. Don't really understand Like I said, I told you what we got called here for, yeah. and. I hate doing double cuts sometimes. There we go. There we go. Finally, another cop arrived, and they detained BCSO Deputy Michael Barreco pending further investigation. Let me uh, sit you down over here in my car. Okay? <coughs> I haven't patted him down or nothing. Yeah. There you go. Oh, you got the fob. Just have a seat for me right yeah. now. Right, just stand by for me, okay, man? Thanks for your patience. Yeah, what are we waiting for? The suspect did not resist and remained calm, almost as if he were innocent. He had just gotten 5'6. He was just hanging out. There's a like a vest, like a duty vest in there. He's been with BCSO for 15 years. Yeah, and he said he keeps saying that's his county vehicle, but I don't know if that means like work or like POV for us. 
but it's so I don't know. But there's a vest inside the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Because right now, for what they're saying, so it could possibly impersonating an officer if he's not actually actually an SO. Yeah. I guess I'll go. Okay. Um, is Sarge here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's what I said. Like, there's a vest in this thing. I was asking him, I was like, oh, you got all this stuff in there? And he kept saying no, but I didn't go in the vehicle to see the vest or anything like that. So, right. The officers discussed among themselves trying to assess the situation. So they decided to search the suspect's vehicle without opening the door. Yeah, it's a vest that says sheriff right there. It's got a taser, rifle mags. There's his pistol. He told me he didn't have a gun. Here's his radio. Um, I don't see. Damn, he might be a 34. He might be a legit 34. But uh, I don't see a PA system. Okay. Let me uh. Sure, it's 46. Go ahead. I call uh, the record is going to be negative. 12 is valid. Temple, thank you. As the officers searched the vehicle, they soon realized that the assailant had lied earlier about not possessing a weapon. Hey, how are you, sir? Do you want to? Do you want to? Okay. He's saying an actual SOW where he stole a bunch of shit. We don't know for sure. So, do you want to get an SO sergeant here to figure out who? Because I can ask you on the radio. Because I think we should. Let me talk about the impact first. Okay. Then, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we'll just wait for a second. Can you, know, actually, can you just grab the bin? See if it... Oh, it matches? Yeah, that plate doesn't belong to you. No, no. Oh, oh, it might be, yeah, for their UC stuff. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Is it? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Back on the wrist again. Oh, my. Can you tell? Was it on there? Yeah, I think so. Come out. There we go. Let's try to turn. Let's try to yeah. Let's try to turn your wrist a little bit more. Let's can can you go? I know. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a, the best way to yeah, make no, it I, comfortable. There you go. There you go. That'll work. That'll work, right? More cops arrived at the scene, and together they went to review the gas station security footage to gain much-needed clarity on what had transpired earlier. He's out of cops, oh, so he doesn't want to press charges in many ways inside. Um, uh, so, so questions. Do you guys, I assume since the crime is involved with the firearm, you guys are taking that for evidence, or? So right now, so my sergeant's talking to a, one of the callers or victims. Um, okay. To the best of my knowledge, the vehicle got sealed and towed to our crime lab, so everything right now is still inside the vehicle. Did he have the firearm on him? No. When we took, when he stepped out of the vehicle, he didn't have it on him. Okay. When he stepped out, it was about the badge, anything like that. Um, I didn't pat him down. That officer did there. He didn't. I didn't see him pull anything out of his pockets. It didn't look like he had his badge on or anything like that. Um, but I can tell you, in the passenger seat, I saw a vest that said sheriff, had his taser, like rifle mags saw the radio in the cup holder and then whatever hand pistol handgun was on the seat as well okay not in a holster or anything like that the bcso was contacted and they sent a team to assess the situation and the arresting officer briefed them on what had happened what was them sir the alleged victims were just gonna get them out of here cool so when you release him they don't lose their mind you want me to talk with them first or? Um, get him. Yeah, we can chat with them. Okay. One of the senior cops gave an order to the arresting officer to swiftly remove the alleged victims from the scene. This maneuver was intended to prevent any potential protests from the victims when the BCSO officer gets released. Hey, how are you, sir? How are you? Good, good. So we're done with our investigation, <laughs> our side of things. Um, you know, we did seal the 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 truck that he had, he had like the body arm, firearm and stuff like that. So we have our detectives, it's like our impact team. They're gonna do some follow-up because that's what this needs, obviously. Right. So tonight, he's not going to jail, he's not being arrested. Um, just based off of what we saw, putting everything together for tonight, he won't be going to jail. Okay. So we have our impact sergeant, if you'd like to 
I don't know if you do need to speak with him, but pretty much that's what's gonna happen tonight. We'll release him, the deputy, here in a second. Okay. And then if he needs me to go with you guys, or we can call somebody, but we just wanna get him home safe. If you guys don't need him, I can definitely tra transport him home. Yeah. Um, and take care of it that way. So, yeah, that's not a problem. Okay. The officer approached the BCSO team and informed them that their colleague would not be spending the night in jail until they were done with their investigations. However, they were going to thoroughly search his vehicle as part of the investigation. Anything else? Anything? You got every, You got the victim's statements, the, his statement, and then um, no other witnesses. We're gonna, you're going to get that video? Yeah, this we, we sent him an evidence leak. We do have a CD, DVD that we're tagging, and then he's gonna come back here at like four in the morning, so I can come back to, to upload it. Confirm that everything did get uploaded. So he gave you a he gave you a DVD. Yes, correct. Uh, let me have that. You have that DVD. All right, sir, so we just talked with your chain stuff. Investigation-wise, things are all gonna be on pause. Um, again, we took your truck, sealed it, just for evidentiary value. We're gonna look over everything at a later time just to make sure we're doing what's right. So everything is justified, there's no questions. For tonight, though, um, you're being released. Um, nothing's gonna take place further. We gave your chain the report number and stuff. Um, they'll be, they are willing to give you a ride home. So we're gonna get you out of these cuffs, sir. Thanks for being compliant. Um, so let's do that. Let's get you out of here, sir. Just... How, am I, uh, how am I able to get my phone, man? Uh, tomorrow morning, the one sergeant, I don't know if you saw the other one that was with me, he's in contact with the chain. Once things are being like released and stuff, you I can can't, get- I like, get in contact with anybody like, without my phone, man. Like, not even like, work and stuff. Well, we, you know too, like just our side, if we take something out of that truck, we're violating you know, your rights and stuff. So we had to do the right thing too. I'm sorry. So, so, I guess, so, so I guess, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Like, yeah. How do I do, like, how do I get my phone? Or how do you we're know, we're gonna get phone? probably everything to you tomorrow. So our detectives, they come out, start unsealing the vehicle, doing their uh, search warrant stuff, okay. and get your property back, yeah. Okay. We'll get you out of here, sir. Nope. Oh, at least your right one, first one. Cool. You have everything on you, sir, that you need? Yeah. All right, and then I think one of them will help you out, sir. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Appreciate it. The warrant sergeant gathered all the evidence from the scene, and then the arresting officer released the suspect. If you need contact with me, just, um, again, my name is Jared Romero, and so um, Sergeant Rahimi is going to be doing my like initial um, report for it and then I'm going to be doing the follow-up for everything else that comes after it. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, I give you my phone, my contact information so that way you guys can get in touch with me. Alright? Alright, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. A search warrant was obtained, and inside the vehicle, they discovered loaded magazines and two body cameras. They also found a 9mm, which perfectly matched the detailed description given by the victims. The violent and reckless cop was booked on the grave charges of aggravated assault with a dead man, compounded by the negligent use of sex. He was also placed on immediate administrative leave, but to everyone's shock, this corrupt and defiant cop pleaded not guilty to the charges levied against him. One of the charges was also dropped due to the absence of one of the victims in court. Well, that brings us to the end of his video. Today, we saw cases where corrupt police officers were caught breaking the law. Particularly disheartening was the first case where an innocent individual lost his life in the hands of an aggressive and unremorseful cop. To make matters worse, his department tried covering up the case for their 
colleague for years before the recent investigation was carried out. In the second case, the assailant and his allies are trying to cunningly escape the wrath of the law. We can only hope that these tyrant cops learn their lesson and improve their conduct. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.